Hello, I hope the sun coming out in most parts of the city is a sign of good things to come. It's the 23rd of August 2021 and this is Metropole Business Center with me Fred Makori. As at June 2021, Kenya's public debt stock stood at 7.7 .7 trillion Kenya shillings. Based on Worldometer elaboration of United Nations data, Kenya has a population of slightly about 55 million as of 21st August 2021. This then means that every Kenyan alive has at least, as, a, as at 21st August 2021, is owing approximately 130,000 Kenya shillings in public debt. Yes. You and I owe that much. William Odiambo, an economist and CEO Elim Capital, will be joining us in the second part of the show to put this into perspective. The discussion is on public debt. What does it mean for you and for me? On Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham and Manchester United were in action this weekend. John McCarley on the third and final part of the show will be bringing us a roundup of sports. Talk to us on at Metropole TVKE at Fred McCurry across all social media platforms. This is Metropole Business Center. Now Vincent Odiambo joins me and he's been scouring the social media to just find us what are people talking about, Vincent? Well, uh, as usual, people are talkative, of course, on Twitter and other social media platforms, Instagram. But today we're going to look at Twitter specifically. Yeah. All right. And since we're looking at the debt, mm -hmm. we're looking at how people are reacting to the amount of money that Kenya keeps on borrowing. All right. And definitely we don't have actually a clear plan mm -hmm. on how to um, fix Okay. the amount that we've borrowed so far. Right. Now, we'll begin from David Ndi. Mm -hmm. He says, Kenya's public debt is up one trillion in, uh, in from April 2020, borrowed in the pretext of cushioning the economy from COVID-19. Had it been deployed as income protection stimulus checks, each household would have received 90,000 shillings. Where has it gone now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at the country that we are in. Uh, according to Ndi, he wanted that Kenyans should be given this money to their banks. Yeah. You, uh, Fred, yes. if I gave you <laughs> this uh, particular amount, yeah. would have it made a difference mm -hmm. in regards to how the government has handled uh, the, the, the amount they received so far? You see, for, in part, I, I understand where David Ndi is coming from. Mm -hmm. But also, when you look at it, the problem is not that the money would not, was not disbursed to Kenyans or yes. would have served better being disbursed to Kenyans. But I think the issue is, when we look at how the money has been spent, it is not clear. Because all we had, allegedly, that two billion gets stolen every day. Mm -hmm. So you see now when, when Kenyans hear about that and then you come again and tell them that we're going to borrow another one trillion, then there's a problem. Mm -hmm. As in that is where we're saying, you borrow that money, then just divide it amongst us because we are the ones who are even going to pay the, the, the loan anyway. Yes, so I think true. that's where this is coming from, in my opinion. Will it have made a difference in my pocket? Definitely. Even 10,000 shillings will make a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look at the data as well, um, CBK, at around July, they released the data that a majority of the SMEs or the, 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 the small sized um, businesses, yes. they were financed by the social uh, mm. compartment of the family, yeah. family and friends. Mm. So if you look at that, then you compare what the government was saying, okay, fine, we will sponsor you guys mm. during the 2020 COVID yeah. era. Yes. I think they sort of missed an issue there. Mm. According to Ndi, Mm. They should have given them. That, give them the money, let them mm -hmm. sort themselves out. Okay, fine. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let's look at Sospita Kimani underscore says, mm -hmm. um, the government borrows externally in order to raise funds for budgetary def deficit as opposed to internal borrowing, which reduces the funds available for development projects. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. this is one thing that people on Twitter, KOT, they really don't understand. Yeah. Uh, the difference between borrowing locally and borrowing internationally. Yes. Now for them, some are still 
reluctant and saying, okay, fine, let's borrow internationally. Mm -hmm. But then the others are like, no, let's borrow locally. locally. Yeah. But one thing they, did, don't, they don't understand is that if you borrow locally, mm -hmm. then you, give, you don't give the opportunity for the small uh, businesses to borrow money mm -hmm. from the banks. Mm -hmm. As a result, the banks will always mm, lend, to, lend to the government yes. because they are assured at the uh, end of, of the course, day <laughs> it's a sure bet <laughs> they'll pay that money yeah but one thing that i and the majority of the kenyans don't really understand is the fact that we keep on borrowing money mm -hmm. but where do we spend it yes where does it go mm -hmm. initially we were talking about uh, and he was talking about giving you money mm -hmm. to your pocket mm -hmm. you as fred yes. hmm? Between borrowing externally and borrowing locally, yes. which one would you prefer? I, I mean, after you've just explained what you've done, <laughs> <laughs> there's no way I would say that. But pe pe locally. people are different. <laughs> because if you look at what the government is doing, yes. it's also different. Because mm -hmm. if you compare the time of Kibaki, mm -hmm. Kibaki never really borrowed locally. Yes. And at that time, mm -hmm. Kenya's economy was booming. It was growing, yeah. I wish mm -hmm. that the leaders that are coming next mm. next year mm. could at least forget about local borrowing and, and just maintain mm. international yeah. but uh, there is a disclaimer there yes, because uh, uh, if you continue <laughs> borrowing at the end of the day yeah. we'll borrow to the point where we are in a death trap okay yeah all right uh, another tweet at wn wamalo says the audit finding notes that some of the entities given loans continue to perform dismally and require government bailouts. Mm -hmm. Non-repayment of the loans has led to continued write-offs of the loans as bad debts and eventually loss of public funds. Mm -hmm. This will refer, I'll refer you to IMF mm -hmm. uh, recommendations. Some of the government parastatals, they don't make money. But so far, mm -hmm. have you seen what has happened so far? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing any progress mm -hmm. towards... The only thing that I've probably seen was the Nairobi University where they were saying, okay, uh, the principals of different schools yeah. will no longer be and having that thing. And stuff like that. But yes. at the end of the day, yeah. uh, UN uh, Vice Chancellor said, mm -hmm. we'll still maintain and retain them. Yeah. So it means they're still being paid. Of course. So where is the reduction? You see... Um, an office is not just the employee. Mm -hmm. It comes with a lot of other expenses mm -hmm. that are beyond just the employee. Like mm -hmm. now, the principal of that college mm -hmm. would have a secretary, would have uh, entertainment and tea. That's what I hear a lot in those governments. Magazetti, <laughs> uh, transport and mm -hmm. fuel and all those things. So there, there are all this budget allocation that goes into an office mm -hmm. that, uh, in my opinion, if we scrap out that office, some of these things can go. We might maintain the principal, mm -hmm. but some of these things would it will reduce, not probably not significantly, but there will be a saving, even if it's 20,000 shillings. Even if it is 20,000. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let's look at the last tweet. At Mze Kibor says, Kenyans, especially the youth, lack financial literacy, mm -hmm. hence borrow to spend without having a payment plan. Mm -hmm. A repayment plan, sorry. Mm -hmm. From mobile loans to Fuliza, the generation is consuming more debts than Kenyans, one of, than Kenyans, one to China. Yeah. With this many apps, take advantage. Let's let's not handle the apps uh, itself. Yeah, uh, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> let's handle the fact that we really, do, especially the youths, they really don't have repayment plans. Mm -hmm. But remember, the leaders out there, they keep telling us that youths are the leaders of, of tomorrow. tomorrow. So, yeah. Kenya's debts, <laughs> Ukuju, yeah. the leaders of tomorrow, yeah. they don't have repayment plans. Yes. What next? But you see, the youth follow after their elders. If the elders are borrowing, mm -hmm. the youth borrow. Mm -hmm. The problem is, mm -hmm. the elders are not telling the youth that we are borrowing so that we better our lives. So then they are saying, uh, our president, go to China and get a loan. But the president is not telling them, this loan I'm taking, mm -hmm. there's a budget to fund a country. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to this budget that I need to exactly. No, so me, me, as a youth or somebody younger than me, mm -hmm. or not me, no, definitely, somebody <laughs> younger than me would go borrow uh -huh. without even okay. a plan. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is to consume. All oh, right. Yeah. Now, one particular, in terms of the government not telling, let's look at one particular tweet, the last one. Uh, at A underscore Kesgoy says, if we cannot stop borrowing, mm -hmm. 
let us at least have rules. Let us only borrow only when it is strictly necessary. And let us, trans let us be transparent and make loan agreements public documents. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you said. Yeah. Because um, I can see. Mm -hmm. All the first two, obviously. We, it's true. We yes, cannot. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But public, making them public, mm -hmm. Kenya, Apo, you know. Apo <laughs> Apo <kashida. laughs> well, yeah. That is it for today. <laughs> thanks and a lot. We'll keep monitoring and seeing yeah. what exactly Kenyans want. So, so, and yes. basically, yeah, thanks for introducing that to us. That is what we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. in our second part of the show. We are taking a short break at this point. When we come back, William Ramogi, CEO, Elim Capital, would be uh, putting this whole topic into perspective. Public debt. What does it mean for you and for me?